Hi everyone, this is Tasula with AtU2.com and this is your OTR column for Sunday, May 10th, 2015. Matt McGee pioneered this version of OTR back in 2011, but since then no one's attempted it. I figured I'd give it a shot this weekend thinking it would save me some time. That was not exactly the case, but hey, I'm here, you're here, let's do this. So the first thing I'd like to discuss is the hype surrounding the current tour, or the lack thereof, according to many of you. Um, we've been getting some mail and we've been seeing some things on social media lately about um, angry and upset fans that you two are not doing more to promote the current tour or that their management is not. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and say that the silence is sort of a good thing. Uh, we all remember what happened in September when they dropped their album, they did this huge stunt with Apple and people were pissed. Um, granted, that was a little different because something was being forced upon uh, consumers. This time, they actually would have had a more robust promotional schedule, but Bono got hurt, and he had to spend that time that they would have dedicated to that to heal, which I'm okay with. <laughs> and then they had to go rehearse, which I'm also okay with. Uh, the benefits to not having such a robust promotional tour are that the songs are going to feel even fresher because we haven't seen all of them yet. We don't know every last little detail of what's coming, which I think is actually great. I've already made myself very angry, um, spoiling things for myself. I read the New York Times article. I know what the stage looks like. I even watched the Subway performance from New York that was on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon before it aired because I couldn't wait. I was so excited. But then when I actually watched the show, I was like, oh, here's the Subway bit. Here's the bottom on the bicycle bit. You know, there was a lot less to it uh, because I already spoiled it for myself, and that's nobody's fault but my own. But for those of us who have no self-control, like me, I think it's awesome that we know very little, actually, about what's happening with the tour. I think we can look forward to some amazing sound. I'm very excited about what they're experimenting with in that regard. And uh, I just can't wait to hear those new songs from the new album come to life because... As I said in September, and I'll say again, I do think that Songs of Innocence is the best album they've made since Octum Baby. And as for The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, um, there was some moaning and groaning amongst fans that a lot of the folks in the audience did not know the words to Song for Someone. But you've got to understand that those tickets are given out months in advance. People that are going to the show don't know who the talent is going to be that the night that they see it. Now, that doesn't mean that U2 or Live Nation or Gaio Siri couldn't have perhaps filled the first few rows with fan club folks, which would have been nice. But uh, there was some short notice involved here, and I, I do understand why the show was not able to accommodate the super fans in that regard and the fact that the band played beautiful day and everybody did pretty much seem to know that one made up for it plus jimmy fallon's enthusiasm i think makes up for all of us who could not be there because <laughs> he is one of us clearly all the more reason to love him if you did not catch that show by the way i will go ahead and put the link to all of the snippets that we have uh, on our site so you can check those out but be forewarned some folks that are outside of North America are having trouble viewing it, so it may not be compatible in your country. Just check and see. You know how when you're shopping for a new car, for example, um, you decide on a make and model and a color that you want, and then all of a sudden, all you see on the street are those types of cars? Well, I think I have the same problem, only it's regarding you too. They seem to be everywhere, and I think that's wonderful, of course. Uh, but I, I'm always a little bit surprised at how often I actually see them, even though I'm not technically, consciously looking for them. So one example is uh, a few years ago, I flew down to San Francisco for the day, long story, <laughs> and went to a movie with some friends, and we took a bus to get to that movie. On that bus, we saw this sign. Now, what are the odds in a city as large as San Francisco that we are going to get on the exact bus with that exact quote at that exact time? Three U2 fans, you know. I mean, luck of the draw, sure, but my gosh, fantastic. Nice surprise. 
My most recent instance of this same thing happened when I read a book that I should have read a long time ago, uh, just a few weeks ago. It's called Night of the Gun, and it's the memoir by the late New York Times writer David Carr. He was my favorite journalist in the world, and sadly we lost him earlier this year. But he actually recites a moment in the middle of this memoir that's about drug addiction and family and struggles and cancer and calls out uh, this. Well, I'll just read it and you can see for yourself. There are moments in the party lifestyle when you know in your bones that you are at the epicenter of something spectacular, a moment that couldn't be replicated no matter how much cunning and planning came before it. Witnessing you 2s first tour, as Bono came out and threw a glass of water up into the lights, the drops misting down, and my sister Koo and I swim into the mosh pit at First Avenue until the tops of our shoes were black from getting stepped on. I think we can all agree that it's moments like that that make our band so special. Every day is an opportunity to give, but several times throughout the year we have campaigns that nudge us to give a little bit more. And we had one just a few weeks ago called Hashtag Give Big, and I decided to participate. And I split my donation between two organizations. The first, the Pink Daisy Project. Now, full disclosure, I am a volunteer for this organization. It was started by my friend Debbie, who survived breast cancer in her early 40s, and saw a need for uh, women who are diagnosed young as she was to have some of the financial burden alleviated while they, while they battle the cancer. And so her organization provides gift cards for necessities like gas, groceries, anything that those ladies and their families might need uh, while they fight the cancer and need to focus on healing. The second organization I chose to give to was the African Well Fund, and I donate to them every year during their Build a Well for Bono's birthday campaign. Uh, they've been doing it for several years, and each year they choose a different project to fund in Africa. And what I like about the organization is that they're very transparent, you know where your money's going, they show progress reports on what is being done once you've donated, and as a perk, if you donate during that specific campaign, you get to sign a birthday card for Bono, which I know he has looked at in the past. So that's a nice bonus. If you're interested in giving to the Pink Daisy Project or the African Well Fund, I will put links to both of those organizations in the notes for this column on the site. So, since we've talked about building a well for Bono's birthday, we can't really not talk about Bono's birthday. Today, he turns 55, and so in his honor, I will soon be devouring this red velvet cupcake um, to celebrate. B-Man, this one's for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Come on, sing with me. Happy birthday, dear Bono. Happy birthday to you. See you in Vancouver next week.